Living with Machines was an experiment in what it is possible to achieve with digitised cultural heritage collections. The British Library has been digitising its collection for many decades, and especially our newspaper collection, which is very relevant and the main data set for the Living with Machines project. That's partly because it's a great way of providing access to our collections for those who can't make it into our reading rooms, and also because it helps preserve the collections by reducing the number of people who need to access the physical items. But of course, we've also found that it enables new forms of digital scholarship, digital research. And we know that um, in the research community, there are new research questions and researchers that want to use this material in many different ways. So working with the Alan Turing Institute and with our university partners, it was an ideal opportunity for us to have much bigger case of how we might use large at scale cultural heritage data. For the Living with Machines project, digitization was the first part of the project and it was really essential for us to complete the data sets that we needed for very specific research questions. So historians had to start researching it and decide what were, what were the areas, uh, the geographical areas and the historical decades that they wanted to focus on. When you start to digitize a page of newspaper text, a map, a manuscript, and you can transcribe the text using computational or uh, manual methods. You can understand the images on the page. You can understand that item in a wider context. You can apply new methods to it. Digitization of heritage materials is challenging in all cases because you are often encountering things that are quite old, maybe in fragile condition in many different formats. And also newspapers in particular, a sort of material that has been made for one day use. You're meant to read it and you're meant to discard it after that. But uh, keeping them for hundreds of years means they are very crumbly and they are often in a challenging condition. So newspapers are catalogued and by, by the title, but we don't have enough information about the number of pages, the number of issues available. So whenever we select newspapers, we don't know exactly how many images we need to digitize. And so digitization of materials for living with machines was a very challenging part of this project. That included digitizing about half a million newspaper pages, especially as the majority of that process also happened in the middle of the pandemic. When we digitize and we obtain the material, that's not the end of the process. What it is important is to make this material available to researchers, historians, and anyone else in the project. We had to develop an infrastructure that helped researchers access this material easily, but at the same time, ensuring that this material is safe and that all copyrights are um, protected. This is where the text and data mining exception comes in. So there's a clause within the Copyright Act, which is quite small. And it says that a researcher can make copies for computational analysis. The researcher has lawful access, the research is non-commercial, and that there is sufficient acknowledgement given to the origin of the data. We have enabled lots of data to go into the British Library repository, which makes the material available for everybody else as well. For us, that has meant increasing literacy in digital methods across the library. So Living with Machines outputs, such as workshops, tutorials, data sets, have contributed to our internal training program and to external training programs working across the glam or the cultural heritage sector as well. And therefore, it is a project that's important, not just in its own right, but also for researchers that will come after that. AI and machine learning is drawing lots of really important questions about societal impacts, around bias. And in our particular data, we are dealing with historic data that needs to be understood in its own context in a way that is rich and that brings together human expertise together with data. So we are really in great need of better infrastructure for the humanities, AI and machine learning research. One of the nice things about working at the library 
is just how amazing it is to see behind the scenes and see how the library works, even if it is something basic like the um, how a book is retrieved from the basement and delivered to a reading room, to see all of the amazing artefacts and manuscripts that the library has and how they're stored and how they're made available to people.